if you turn that clock back and look at the first instance of the life of the universe, you notice that as you go back in time, temperatures get hotter, densities go higher, and at some point, basically, you cannot use the standard theory that Einstein gave us. That's the Big Bang singularity. Classical cosmology uh, could describe everything up to, the, like, back to that time. And because every, physics breaks down there, this is the time that really, really we want to know what happens, but we don't have enough tools. We don't have a good theory to describe that. Maybe uh, the Big Bang, as we think about it as a singularity in our past, is not really there, but rather a mirage of something more complicated, something that uh, actually happened in one higher dimension. We found that, okay, we can interpret this singularity in a different way. At some point, a star dies. A black hole forms in, in four dimension. This black hole has an event horizon. If the size of uh, our universe is larger than the, the horizon, and if we are living outside the horizon, then we are protected from that singularity. If you have a star that collapses, and out of the remnants of that collapsing a star in a four-dimensional universe, a membrane emerges, uh, the properties of that membrane could very well describe the properties of the cosmology in which we live in. And maybe that means that there was no Big Bang, maybe there was a supernova explosion in one higher dimension. Of course, there would be differences, obviously, but uh, there might be similarities more than anybody might have imagined. I think that is one possible case to consider. Lots of other brilliant people cl had clever ideas. What I love about cosmology is, uh, is asking big questions, and you can try to answer them as ambitious as it may sound. I'm still not happy. I want to know more. I want to know what's beyond the Big Bang, what happened before that. So we just try to look back as far as we can, and where we stop, we, we try harder.